We all love mechanical keyboards. That's probably not true. I love mechanical keyboards, and I love ZX Spectrums. And this is a proper mechanical keyboard for a ZX Spectrum. So I'm going to put my ZX Nucleon in this, and I'm going to mess around with it. Check it out. Proper keys like you get on a fancy PC keyboard. And then I'm going to tell you about some news about a new version of this, which you'll be able to print off yourself and build yourself. So this is the Mechtrum keyboard from Lee Smith's workshop. The big difference with this keyboard compared to the other ones that we've seen is that it comes with a whole case. Just because of the size of it and the thickness of it, I suppose it doesn't fit into a normal 48k Spectrum case. The Zlux keyboard that we assembled and tested out previously, that's this cool thing with the clicky keys and the RGB lights, really liked that, as well as the Ginger Electronic keyboard, which is a similar thing but for the ZX Spectrum Plus cases, we put this into a toast rack, were both created with very thin PCBs that fit into the original Specky cases. Of course the limitation here is you're limited to buttons which are SMD and very thin, and you can't get the mechanical keys which we're all used to these days that we use with our PCs. This is where the Mechtrum keyboard comes into the picture, I've got one here and I'm just starting to tinker with it. I've seen that the keyboard is loose so you can pop it up, I think I'm going to stick it down so it doesn't fall out. Looking at the back there's an opening there for the edge connector and another opening for all your ports. It's clearly 3D printed but it's really really nice, I like the multi-colour effect with this rainbow badge and the keys are all super nice. They are actually laser engraved with all the different options and commands which you get on your normal specy. They're not just PC keys that have been put on, these are custom made. Let's open it up and see what's inside. It looks like there are six long screws holding it together, four of which go through the holes in the corners of the ZX Spectrum PCB. On this particular one, which is second hand, one of the screws wasn't biting. I guess that's a risk that you run with the 3D printed material, but I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Last screw here and we'll be inside. So it's assembled from a few larger pieces. First of all, this one at the back pops off and we can see the columns where the screws were going in. There's our ribbon cables poking out and I found a bag of goodies. This seems to be various backplates to go on, depending on which version of a ZX Spectrum you're using in there. I guess it's compatible with a Harlequin, for example. Actually, after edit, I have done some research and it's compatible with the ZX Spectrum 48K, Byte Delights, Harlequin and the Civzif uh, 512 boards. Here's the underside of the keyboard itself, this nice green PCB. There are two robust looking ribbon cables here with PCB connectors at the end, which I really like. I don't like messing around with those thin ribbon ones on the original speckies. I've noticed while filming this that one of these joints isn't soldered up. That's all right, we can touch that up now. Time to dig out the trusty Maplin vise, RIP Maplin. And there we are, sorted. All right, moving on with our tour. There are two more large components to the case. That's the one that the keyboard is sitting in there, which I've just removed. Here it is, quite a nice piece. And the bottom half, which has a speaker hole in it, which is handy. If you want to print one of these cases yourself, there's a link in the description. You can send those files to PCBWay, this video's sponsor, and have them printed extremely easily. All you need to do is drag all of the SDL files in to the 3D printing form on the website. You can see 3D previews of your items, and you can choose from all kinds of materials. You can even have it made of titanium if you're feeling adventurous. If you're feeling less adventurous and more sane, go with resin or nylon or PLA, all of these good useful materials which are nice and cheap and you can choose from all kinds of colours. Really easy going for newbies like me. Thanks PCBWay for sponsoring the video. The keyboard itself seems to be attached to the PCB fairly firmly and I'm not going to try and pull it apart and have a look at it because I don't want to break it. I will take a keycap off though and we can have a close look at the clicky key mechanism. It's a blue one which I think has something to do with how clicky it is and how much resistance there is. I'm not an expert on mechanical keyboards but there you are, it's blue. Let's put the lid back on so I don't lose it. Mmm, clicky. So what am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to put the Nucleon in it. 
The nucleon at the moment is in a normal Spectrum Plus case that I've modified on the back so the extra buttons can poke through, but I want something a bit more special for the nucleon, so I'm going to remove it from this case and try and get it going in the Mectrum. Let's take this case apart. If you haven't seen the video, the nucleon is a clone based on the Pentagon clone of the ZX Spectrum. This is a modern kit that comes up on eBay from time to time. It's a ZX Spectrum with 512 kilobytes of memory, which is awesome, and I think it's a really fun project to put together, especially if you can just buy the whole kit. If you catch one on eBay, all you need to do is start soldering. Here it is, this one has a lovely purple PCB, it's a version 4A of the Nucleon, keeps getting updated over time. Let's have some close-ups of this lovely bit of kit before we put it into the Mectrum case. It's a great big mishmash of chips on here from manufacturers like Tesla and some Eastern European bits and bobs that I don't recognise. What was really nice was the kit came with all of the chips including the ROM, so I didn't have to do anything other than start building it. What was also really nice was that it fits into a 48k rubber key case if you want that, so they've really packed everything on here quite densely. This Alliance chip in the middle is a memory chip, that's 512 kilobytes of static RAM. These SMD devices are line drivers, so you get lovely square waves on all of the inputs and outputs to the Z80. I also really like that, which is a bit geeky of me, but that's why we're here. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, let's put it into this case. It was held into the ZX Spectrum Plus case using the four screws in the corners and I was just about to start attaching it using those same screws and I realised that we need them for the long screws which go through and hold the whole case together. So we're going to have to go right back to rubber key style and just put one small motherboard screw through the centre of our Nucleon into the middle of the bottom of the case, which I've done and I've also put three of these bottom screws here through to hold the keyboard in place, and here it is, partly assembled. At this point, I got all carried away with double-sided sticky tape until I actually spoke to Lee, who pointed out that there are four screw holes here for the keyboard, which I wasn't using. Um, so I missed them when I first disassembled the case, so let's get all this double-sided sticky tape off, and we'll assemble it correctly. So, keyboard going in, and let's see if I can find some screws which fit, because they seem to have got separated from the keyboard somewhere along the way. So let's have a look. And I did find some suitable screws in the box of screws, so I've popped four of them in, and the keyboard is now absolutely solid in there, it's definitely not going to be falling out, and we definitely don't need any sticky tape. Nice. Let's finish reassembling this case, so there's our back bit on, we can see how everything fits together now with the edge connector on the left, the power socket on the left, and this big opening here. I'm going to try some of the provided backplates there and see if any of them are going to fit the Nucleon's ports and buttons. And this is the closest one, but it's still not right. Uh, I'm going to go for one which doesn't have holes for everything and drill it myself. So that's this one. We've got the C, I don't know if that stands for composite, but that just about fits around the DIN connector for the video. RGB there obviously isn't RGB anymore, that's a button, a reset switch. ME, I'm making E, they're correct, but I've got two extra buttons here on the Nucleon I'm going to need to drill to, to get them to stick out the back. So here's my shiny new calipers, which I'm dead pleased with, I just wanted to show them off really. I'm going to take some measurements, I'm going to mark the plate which I want to drill, I'm going to get the drill out and sort it out. There's my 11.4mm offset to the side, and they are also a tiny little bit raised upwards in, let's call it Z. So I'm going to measure that and make my marks. Which drill bit am I going to use? Well, the button head is 9mm in diameter, so I'm going to go with 9mm bit as a start. I'm going to work up from a smaller bit, otherwise I'm just going to cause havoc, and let's see how we go. I should add at this point that after seeing this, Lee did suggest that he could have designed a special backplate for the Nucleon, which was very kind. Oh yeah, let's have a big argument in the comments about which power tool manufacturer is best. I've gone with Ryobi, not for any particular reason, it's just the first one I bought was Ryobi, so now I'm totally committed. Okay, there we are, and I'm seeing that it's still catching on those buttons. So I drilled it out a bit more with a 10mm bit, and everything seems to be moving freely now. Hopefully that's still the case, 
when I've reassembled the case fully. The big question is, will the video cable go in? That's this DIN connector here, or is it mini DIN? And it's a bit marginal, but it does go in. Um, I think it will come out easily, but it is engaging. So I'm gonna leave it in there and we're gonna try it out in a second. First of all, I need to tidy up a bit. There's drill bits everywhere. The office is starting to look a bit like a garage. Okay, that's better. And look at this, here's my Div MMC interface and it matches. It's like a baby specky on the back of the specky. I love that. I should get an SD card with a mini badge on so there's three of them. Anyway, here we go. I've plugged it in and I'm running a demo and it works. I've got audio, I've got video and the Div MMC is working. So the Nucleon fits. And now we need to put it to the test. I haven't actually done any typing on it yet, which is after all its purpose in life. So let's do a little program and it seems to be working absolutely fine. It's really easy to use, although it is possible to type too quickly on it, which is something you need to bear in mind and get used to. I want to do a proper test. So I found this type in listing for a program which will um, demonstrate the moon's phases, which is quite cool. I'm gonna type all of that in and see how I get on with it. The only grievance I had after typing this in, well, is two really, is that it's too good. Uh, it's too good, first of all, because you can type so quickly that you can type too quickly for the specy. This would be great on a machine with a turbo mode. You could flick it onto turbo mode, and I guess that would allow you to type more quickly. Um, and, and secondly, it feels so much like a PC keyboard that my muscle memory and my instinctive touch typing keeps going for keys that aren't there, or I keep pressing the wrong key because I'm used to the layout of a normal, modern, QWERTY keyboard. I suppose you would just get used to that over time. So they're not real criticisms. If anything, I'm just saying that it's too bloody good. I also somehow managed to invert the video while typing that in and I couldn't find the key to undo that. But here's our little program showing the, the phases of the moon. I forgot how fun it is just to type these things in. I recommend you do it. Go and have a look online at you know magazine scans and things like that and type something in and get it going. It's quite satisfying. Uh, but that's besides the point. Point is, this is a fantastic keyboard slash case combination. I highly recommend it if you're not too fussy about your machines being in their original cases. That being said, uh, these are quite hard to come by at the minute. You need to keep an eye out on private listings and trading forums. However, Lee is working on some stuff in the background. Files will be available to get your own versions of this produced using this new design, which is compatible with keys which are readily available from AliExpress. This will be compatible with normal Spectrum, um, the new The Spectrum Spectrum, and ESP based Spectrums. So cool, keep an eye out for that soon. Go and check out Lee's channel, workshop, subscribe, follow him, whatever you can do to support. If you're interested in having one of these made up, it's all on printables. I've popped the link in the description and you can go and read all about it and look at Lee's original video on the ZX Mectrum. So I'm gonna leave you with that. I need to go and learn how to design a back panel which fits the Nucleon and have it 3D printed by PCBWay. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you around for the next video.